podcast i'm your host eric and this is randy hello you're randy today I guess. yeah i almost said i'm your host randy <laughs> anyway we got a lot of stuff to talk about today we got uh today's the 4090 launch day yeah. so we want to talk about that we want to talk about that's all uh, we're talking about today no no that's all no. we're talking about today yep we're talking about more than that uh <laughs> trust me dude but uh <laughs> we gotta we'll go through that that oh, segment. Steam Deck. We can talk about Steam Deck. Steam Deck? Oh, That's yeah, fine. you did get a Steam That's Deck, fine. man. We could talk about that. You know, because we, we missed last week. We did miss last week. There's a lot to talk about. Yeah, there you is got a, a lot Steam to talk Deck. About. You got, you know, you know something else today. Uh, a dock. I got a dock today. That's what we're talking a about. A Steam Deck dock? The Deck dock, dude. Okay. The you Deck know, dock. I, we do want to talk about that, you mm-hmm. know. Uh, you know, I so, something's on your wrist, my dude. Like, I can see it in the camera. Like, uh, I don't know what um, that is. I don't know what that is, dude. Uh, I can see it, though, man. I, I mean, it's a nice hoodie. It's green, but, like, there's something it, that it matches green, it dude. in the frame. And, uh, you know, that's weird because I don't recall you having a uh, round uh, kind of like, uh, I don't know. It's, like, uh, what it's, the, uh, what the it's, fuck? Just a, it's just a device. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, we'll talk about that. It's we'll a, talk about it's a that. Heart monitor. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. Uh you know, does it happen to have an action button on it? <laughs> In international orange? Maybe. It, oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. You know, we'll talk. You don't want to talk about that first, do you? We could talk about whatever you want. Man. All right. Well, how about we start with the 4090? All right. Let's start with the 4090. Yeah. So 4090 launch day. Uh, very exciting. So yesterday, benchmarks came out for the 4090. And I know yesterday that it was like the official like embargo release, right? So exactly. like they're no longer speculation. They're no longer leaks. Like these were the official, like the exactly. official boys, real numbers, real numbers that we can actually use and be like, this sure. is like legit. So, you know, everyone came out. I watched gamers nicest video. I watched like a ton of other people's videos on the 4090 and you know, it's, it's sort of, um, I think it meets my expectations. Actually, I'd say it exceeds my expectations as far as performance. I think so too. I think that after like actually seeing them, yeah, I think I agree with you on that, man. Like I think the performance that, is actually yeah. significant. Now, yeah. if we're talking about is it a good value, I'd say that um, it's a it better is. value I think, if I think you it's a good value. if you look at what it is compared to like a forty eighty, like the two different forty eighties. Like it's sure. to me, it's a way better. I wonder if they did that. I wonder if they did that because if you remember, there was a lot of controversy with the 3000 series about the 3090 not being that much better than the 30, um, than the 3080 and they didn't give it anything like SRI OV or the special like dual float point encoding stuff as well. So at right. that point, you were paying significantly more for not as much. And now I feel like people are, are not happy that they did it the other way. It's just, yeah, it's weird. To me, it kind of seems really like it's one of those things where it's win? like you, you, you're just not going to please everyone. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Uh, I here's here's where I feel like um, last generation messed up. So the 3080, like, I, I I just felt like the 40 the 3090 just wasn't worth it. Like if I looked at what I got the from 30, my money, 90. yeah, the 3090 wasn't sure, worth it. Sure. Um, it wasn't until later that you had gotten one and uh you showed me the rt performance and ray tracing and i was like wow the 3080 just isn't a 4k capable ray tracing card not really it's just not like uh, and playing it like uh dlss like performance mode just isn't good it's not a good experience even if you have ray tracing like the fidelity loss is just not worth using ray no, tracing. i agree with that it's kind and, of it's um, kind of whack yeah, it's just it feels jank with a 3080, but I felt like the 3090 was the first ray tracing 4K card. Even then, you weren't getting like high frame rate or anything, right? Like you were getting uh, no, above 60, uh, probably, right? It depends on the game, right? Uh, like, yeah, like which if is you, bad like, to say, really. It's really bad to say, but like I also feel like, dude, if you wanted to play Cyberpunk in right. like RTX Ultra in 4K or RTX Overdrive, wherever it's called, I forget what it's called, in 4K, um, and get decent frames without using DLSS, I feel like the 4090 can't even do that still. Like, that's still a sub-60 experience. That's a 44 FPS experience. You know, if we're talking about uh, the current gen 4090, so you still need DLSS. You're Mm -hmm. still going to need it. So I was looking at, you're not even getting, I'd say, where you're happy is above 60 right like for right. me that's kind of right. like the standard i know there's a lot of gamers out there that i think can settle with i think 30, um 
and it could probably do a non upscaled 30 on a, on a lot of these RT yeah. games. But like to me, I'm on PC. I expect kind of above 60 gaming for sure. me. Like that's what I want. Unless I'm on a Steam Deck, then I can make exceptions, right? Right. Um, but like I kind of, if I'm on the PC and I'm paying big money, I expect to be getting above 60. So I was kind of thinking about that a little bit, you know, not to like jump topics around, but like I think that for a game like Cyberpunk, and, and I'm just going to use that as an example, right? You know, I think that if you can get like a stable 50 even without like a lot of frame time variance. I think that I would be okay with that. Yeah. And the steam deck has really shown me what the value of 40 FPS and 50 FPS stable is. No, right? I agree with that. I agree with that. Have like, you uh, experimented with uh, the 40 and 50 Hertz modes on those? Yeah. I mean, I have per game profiles all the time, right? Okay. So like, for example, you know, like not, not to jump around topics here, but, uh, I set up like a per, a per game profile, which is what I consider my battery optimized profile for that game. And then if I'm like outside, you know, smoking meat or something, I'll usually take my battery bank with me. So at that point, I'll just disable the per game profile and I'll just be full 60 for that game. You know what I mean? Because like right. at that point, I don't need to kind of Conserve worry battery. about battery yeah. life at that point. So, um, but yeah, man, like, like, uh, to your point, you know, I, I've played a bunch of games on the Steam Deck at 40 and 50 and it feels fine. It feels obviously not 60, but it, but 30 is like not something that I want to target ever. You know what yeah. I mean? So I found that like, um, the jump between 30 and 40 was huge compared yes. to like a jump between yeah, 40 you could and really 50 tell the difference. and then even less so for 50 to 60. I feel like the gains are way more significant at the lower frames. Oh, so for sure. Like I felt sure. like you could super feel the difference between a locked 30 and a locked 40 and then 50 was kind of like icing on the cake and 60 is the gold standard. But like I felt like 40 and 50 were so good compared to 30 that like mm -hmm. it wasn't a bad compromise to make for battery. So, no, but, I agree so with like, that. yeah, if you're on PC and you're playing an RT, like fidel high fidelity game, I'd say as long as it's not like a hot, fast paced game, you could get away with like a, like even, I know people are playing like on console 30 frames, but like, um, I always preferred like the performance mode in games, like to get the 60 plus, um, especially. Oh yeah, these, me too. Me too. You know, with I, these later I play all my games in, in, that, in the performance mode. Like this is yeah. going to sound weird. Maybe not. Maybe you won't think it's weird, but like, um, on console games, I'm farther away from the screen, right? right? So, like, I notice, like, the little things like checkerboarding and, you know, dynamic resolution scaling or, like, their FSR. Right. I notice that less because I'm, like, what? Further back, yeah. 10, 11 feet away from the screen. So, for me, you know, a lot of the games, like, I'll use Horizon Zero Dawn as a... Or, I'm sorry, the, what's, what's, the, what's the Horizon? I forget Forbidden what it is. Forbidden West anyway. or something? Frozen Wild? For, no, for, for Forbidden West, West, you're right. Yeah. Um, that look to me, that looks almost as good in performance as it does in quality. Like if I showed you side by side stills from where I sit, right. I think you would get some wrong, you know? Okay. Uh, and like the only difference is like native 4k, you know? So like, it's right. It's, uh, it's one of those things where like, I think on consoles, it makes a lot more sense, but you know, given PC esque distances right. and textures and stuff like that, I feel like higher textures, um, kind of show off features better so like looking at them through dlss is kind of right uh, more more detrimental whereas if you're playing a game on medium already yeah. some textures are already kind of low res right you know, what I mean? you know what i mean yeah it, i mean it matters more on pc to me um, I 100 like, you know, yeah like i can make compromises on console really mm -hmm. but like on pc especially when you're building very expensive rigs like you kind of want uh yeah the best yeah. right it's almost like a slap in the um, face like if you're already dropping like three four thousand dollars and then something doesn't run properly Right. You're like, well, then why didn't I just spend 1800 bucks? You know what I mean? Yeah. And I mean, to be fair to the 4090, like it's a very expensive card, but like it is pumping numbers right now. If yeah. you look at the benchmarks, I mean, they're, it's significant in rasterized performance. This is without DLSS. Like it is actually a significant bump. Now and rasterization doesn't count like RT or anything like no, that. Is well, that correct? yeah, I was basically it's saying just straight, without like, RT. Like triangles, right. Yeah, exactly. Straight triangle pumping. And I mean, you can use RT without, like we mentioned earlier, without DLSS, but it's just not really feasible 
without right. the LSS. You can do it, but your your frames are going to be sub uh, 60 for most sure. games, especially, you know, it's sure. just the way it is. So and it probably depends also on what your, you, like, what your RT is. Like, what because uh, you know how there's what different. implementation, like yeah, local illuminations, things like that. Correct. Sure. So sure. if you like using maybe sense. like an exclusive reflections RT, then you might be able to pull it off like a right. native 4K and, and no right. global illumination, no like shadows. Um, but if it's just reflections, like it might be less taxing. But if you're using like the full blown like functionality of RT, then yeah, you're you're not going to be able to do it. But with that being said, like I mean, if you are used, if you're playing a game with ray tracing, DLSS two and three. Um, interesting that you can just run quality mode and get like crazy frames, right? Right. Um, so it's actually feasible. I think ray tracing in games is finally at a point where it's like, okay, well, you can do it. I mean, Let you me have to be running question. DLSS, but... And this is kind of like on topic, but also going into another topic. Right. Um, I downloaded God of War on my Steam Deck, right? Sure. That's a game that is very hard to get to even 40 on the Steam Deck. Um... Interesting. So I haven't played it on PC. Sure. Because um, so, I already beat it on console in a big way. So I was like, I don't right. need to buy it again. But I, I did want to get it. But so t go on <laughs> to sure. your point. So, so the two one I didn't read was I first bought it on PS4. And on PS4, it's a nightmare. Like, it's not even playable, in my opinion. So I just waited. And then I got it on PC. Yeah. Um, But that supports DLSS and AMD's FSR. Right. And I don't know if it's just the Steam Deck or what's going on. Uh, but, um, FSR like does nothing at all on that game in the Steam. And I don't know, I don't know if that's just FSR because I've never used FSR before. I don't know if that's just how it is on the Steam Deck. I don't know if that's how that game is, but literally no matter what setting mode I set FSR to, nothing changed for my frame rate. The, the image just looked worse. Yeah. I'll be honest. Like I've seen that in other games also. Um, one of the things that you'll... Uh, notice with FSR is there's an in-game FSR implementation and then there's the global Steam Deck implementation. I didn't so, know that. Yeah, so they're they're different. Okay. So I was using the game one. I think you want to prefer the game one, um, but you can try the global one and see if you get any gains. Uh, what here's let me tell you something. Um, what when I've noticed it actually activate is in docked mode. So okay. Uh, if okay. you're if you're using it docked, then you're not really at 720p, right? Uh, I th I think that's really when you're gonna see FSR uh, kick in. And the reason I say that is 720p. It's hard to render a game lower than that and sure. be able to upscale it and get any kind of meaningful like image. James, right? Yeah. So it's really at when you're trying to display at like 1080p or higher that FSR comes into play. Okay. I noticed that it wasn't giving me anything until I tried Monster Hunter World, or sorry, Monster Hunter Rise on the Steam Deck docked at 10 e I was playing at 1080p 120, and I was able to turn FSR on and notice, like, you'll notice the upscaling. Okay. <laughs> you'll definitely right, notice it. Right, right. It's right. no yeah, DLSS, I yeah, I so try it docked. DLSS, so it came to my mind. Yeah, now that you have a, a dock, like, <laughs> try it uh, at least globally also uh, okay. and see if you notice the difference. Okay. Yeah. So Sounds like good. so yeah. Um let's go back to the 4090. Um I'm impressed with the performance. People were talking about the value. I I think that one of the things that uh is interesting, it's a better value uh if I'm talking about cost per frame than the 3090 Ti. It's a better value per frame. Right. But it's kind of like lingering in the same value per frame as like the current or the last gen now right like the 3000 series sure it's kind of like in that same value proposition and um it, it's maybe at like a little bit more value than like uh what's amd's best like the 60 uh what is it called the um i don't know i haven't been a, a red team in a long time so the what's 69. what's their yeah, oh, 6900 XT. Uh, yeah, the 6900 XT. It's actually like a better value than that. It seems like cost per frame, if I'm recalling what I was reading today, um, which is cool. But like, here's the thing: um, generational leaps uh, typically will 
uh, give you more value per frame. It's just the okay. way it's going to be right. if prices were to stay the same, right? So right. say, for example, you have a an $800 card, and every generation they make a new $800 card with more performance. Your price per frame is we'll always, always going to go – well, it's going to – your cost for per frame right, right. is going to go down. Right, right, right. right. Because the, the price of the card stayed the same, but your performance increased. Therefore, the mm -hmm. price per frame, the value goes up, the cost per frame goes down. So that's kind of what you would expect. Sure. Um, if the price has stayed the same. Now, what we're seeing is, this isn't my opinion, with the way the cost per frame is, it's not bad, but it's really not good either mm -hmm. right like it's uh, but at the same time when you look at the performance leap gen over gen it's pretty chunky this generation like the, the yeah. 4090 yeah it's big is leaps and bounds big, above man. like at last gen's best the the 3090 ti and uh that card was like stupid expensive for what it was and right. um you know i'm sure people bought it but like the, they probably feel bad right now because, like, <laughs> you know, they have a card of equivalent value. Uh, just But not equivalent performance. Yeah, exactly. So to me, it's like the value in the card right now, even though its cost per frame isn't really, like, as good as you'd want gen over gen, I feel like the leap in performance is significant enough to get your um, – your enthusiast buyers interested like me, right? So I ended mm -hmm. up getting one today. I was fortunate. I got the yeah, MSI dude, real fortunate. one. Um, so t tell me the tale, because like we both tried at uh, at like the launch window, and then like yep. they came up afterwards. Is that how that worked? Well, nine o'clock rolled around, and we were camping on our various websites. I was on Newegg. I was on I, I was on Nvidia's website, just looking at their card. I went on Best Buy for a bit um, and looked at the cards there, and. You know, all the cards started trickling in at once, but I noticed for the card we originally were hunting for, which was the ROG Strix uh, mm -hmm. 4090, we were going for that card because it's the cream of the crop. Went to buy it, and I had it in my cart for a minute, but as, during checkout, that's when uh, they were like, it's no longer available. And then I was able to get it into my cart one more time, and once again, no longer available. And yeah, I think I got it to the point a, where I had to confirm my shipping address, and then like once it like refreshed after I confirmed the shipping address, yeah, it was like yeah, it's gone. Yeah, and that and that happened to me as well. And and, and that's not the only card that happened to me. I it's I, weird, man. You know, like, yeah, um, I think it's Best Buy, right? Best Buy does this thing where once it's in your cart, it's yours, and then you have like fifteen minutes to check out. Yeah, and, and that's pretty nice. And I, honestly, that should be standard, man. Like, yeah. If you got it in your cart, it's in your cart. Don't don't mess around, dude. Yeah. Uh, don't sell the inventory if it's in your cart. But like, it is what it is. Like, so it, I'm I'm sad they didn't reserve it. I noticed it was on. Uh, it looked like it was up on B and H as well. I, oh, I, I didn't any, think of thing of B and H. To be honest with you, I didn't either until I went on Nvidia's website and uh, they actually have all the partner cards on there. Oh, cool. And, uh, but they don't have neat. them for sale on there. They just, if you click on it, it'll give you all the links to where you can buy them. Okay, and, I see what you're saying. Uh, so I saw like sure. links to B&H, uh, Newegg, Micro Center, um, and uh, yeah, I think that's about it. There was probably, an, oh yeah, Best Buy. So mm -hmm. I saw those on there and I was like, okay, well, let me check out B&H because, you know, obviously we've shopped there before. Right. So I right. was like, I got an account. It'll be quick. But they have a weird uh, system B&H does where... You have to put yourself on to be notified, and then they'll send you a notification when ones are available, and those people get priority. Wait, who gets priority? The people that get notified via email. It on said they're, Yeah. Oh. It, that's what uh, they, they said. It's for, like, uh, customers that, um, that set up their auto-notify thing. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll get uh, first dibs on them. You can't just buy it on B and H. So I was like, "Oh, that's weird." So like, I wonder if they have a queue set up, and then they'll email trickle out emails as they slowly become available. Sure. And you can act on it. It's kind of like reserving your Steam Deck. You get your email, and then you gotta check out. You know, like, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I thought that was. I was like, okay, well, if that if it works as uh, I I think it does, that's pretty cool. Yeah. You can get in line, you know. 
Um, take a number, dude. Yeah, you can kind of take a number, and then you don't have to stress all day. Like, I basically had a meeting at 10 o'clock, so I spent an hour trying to get something out of my cart, and, like, I couldn't get the ROG card. Came back, like, at, at like uh, my meeting was at 10, came back at 11, and then I was like, okay, well, let me try again. And that's when I ended up, you know, seeing a couple cards, like, blip in and out of existence on Newegg, got them in the sure. cart, couldn't do checkout. But I had it all, like, set up. To where all I'd have to do is like add to cart, click, click, done, right? Right, right, right. That's what I did. MSI came into cart, click, click, checkout complete. And then I was like, okay, I got one. So it was a hunt. It wasn't as hard as the 3000 series to get the card but because I got it hours after, you know, they had actually, um, you know, launched. Right. So <laughs> the 3000 series. Well, I think there's probably less demand for the 4000 series. Yeah. But it, I, I feel like... Even though people are saying that on NVIDIA subreddits and on YouTube, YouTubers are like these, you know, sixteen hundred dollar graphics card. And no, I, I'm just I talking about. It. I'm just talking about like um, from like a mining standpoint, right? And from a resale value standpoint, right. I don't oh, think yeah. they have the same appeal. Um, well, yeah. also, also, I feel like a lot of people tried to get three thousand series because like three thousand series has been out for what two and a half years. So like that's a long time and like hardware yeah. wise, you know what I mean? So like people probably were yeah. I, I, I feel like the majority of gamers have bought a three thousand series card and most people play at fourteen forty P or ten eighty P. So right. Yeah, but at the same time, like I feel like you're enthusiast, right? Uh, the guy that upgrades during like the beginning of the generation. I feel like those customers were issuing the upgrade, right? Oh oh I agree completely. But so, like, like that's a smaller subset than people who are trying to mine. Well, yeah, because or miners, if you're a miner, you're trying to get like 20 GPUs, 50 yeah. GPUs. Like you're like, I know a buddy of mine who literally has like a bunch of 3090s chilling uh, wow. because he was using them for mining when it was still a thing. Sure. And so now he's got to get rid of them. And I'm like, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm like, good luck, buddy. He's like, I'm just going to get rid of them for whatever I can. I'm like, okay, cool. I mean, yeah. he bought them for cheap anyway. Uh, for, or, well, actually, they weren't cheap. Uh, <laughs> I think they were above MSRP when he bought them, but sure. they were like, they were cheaper than scalper prices. So, well, they, they were like scalper prices, but not like eBay scalper prices. <laughs> so, anyway. I was like, yeah, that's crazy, man. But um, but yeah, miners aren't buying the 4000 series, I don't think. So uh, that's a great thing for us. I was able to get one. I, it seemed like a lot of people on the subreddit were able to get them uh, that were going after it. But I think that the customer base was bigger than we expected. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, yeah. I think that's kind of cool though that you got one for sure. Yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty excited, man. I'm, I'm building a whole new PC. I haven't really talked about it on the podcast. Uh, I yeah, got man. Like a, let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about your 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 whole build. Yeah, so you know that you're doing, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm excited because you know I went server rack build like 2020. You know what I'm saying? Like 2021, right. and like that was pretty sick. Um, it, because it's going to be a pretty easy swap, right? Um. I'm going to slide it out of my server rack, open up the top, pull everything out, slap in the new guy. I got my new water block in. Got my, uh, God, this thing's oh. heavy, by the way. Oh, dude, 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 the quantum magnitude? Yeah. Dude, it's quality, isn't dude, it? Like, it's kind of oh worth it, right? It's solid, dude. I picked it up. I'm like, this is like a chunk of metal, it dude. It feels like you got what you paid for. Yeah, you could easily. Doesn't it, man? Yeah, it does. It's like a block of whatever the shit it is, nickel. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's serious. Uh, it's serious business, though. I ain't yeah, it is. You. So, I got that guy. I'm buying. A, um, I'm getting a Go Intel. So I'm pretty excited. Getting a 6900. Uh, uh, sorry, getting a thir 13th gen. Uh, 13th it? gen. Yeah. When does that come gen, out, by dude. the way? Like for you? I think it's next week. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. I think All it's. Right. Uh, All right. All right. I think we're building supposedly, soon, boys. It's supposed to be next week is the launch, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I was looking at Newegg, and it was like, said something about the 17th. I, sure. I, I could be wrong. But I, I'm pretty sure next week is when we're going to start seeing that stuff come out. We I don't think we have 13th gen benchmarks yet, but I've heard through my uh, source that it's going to be pretty good. Yeah, it's so, going to be wild. Um, so I'm pretty happy about that. We have it, some. We have some, right? Somewhat. 13th gen benchmarks, just not from YouTubers. Um, I haven't seen them, dude. I haven't seen um, them. We might. 
There's a few that I would probably trust on like uh hardware bot and stuff. Yeah. Where it's like genuine Intel benchmark and you know what it is. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would probably trust those. I I I I I mean Well, I just know that I'm upgrading from a fifty nine fifty X and it's gonna sure. be a serious single core boost. Yeah, for sure. Um so I'm super oh, what's that ding, dude? What's uh, that my ding doorbell. Ding? My, oh, my, oh. my my simply safe doorbell. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was a pretty nice, uh, you know, a little ding, a little chime. You know, it looked like it sounded like it's, it come from a. Uh, it sounded like a quality chime, dude. It like did. a gentle tap on the wrist. That's so. You know weird. what I mean? Like yeah. not like a. Not like a weird a vibration. Vibration. Yeah. It sounded like it just uh like almost haptic like you know like yeah haptic funny guy haptics. dude funny guy yeah let's let's talk let's talk let's talk about the money you spent first man let's talk about money that. I spent yeah dude okay I spent a lot of money dude. You did. I'm. I'm like. I'm. You spent too much money. I'm. Uh, my motto was like, if you're going, to, gonna go in debt, uh, make it crippling. That Great motto, my, dude. We live by it. Yeah, we really do, don't we? Uh, <laughs> this whole podcast is like an excess in a capitalist it is, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's society, just, isn't it? It's just financial gluttony, dude. It really is, dude. Why are we financially? <laughs> financially cluttons dude right i don't know man anyway <laughs> because so, retail therapy is good yeah dude. it is so i basically went ham amanda and i are gonna build uh i'm building two pcs uh, two of them a, uh, yeah. one wasn't enough yeah i w you know i was like we're going 13th gen uh what is it the 13 900 k um yeah something like that uh two of those with the uh uh, asus motherboard that you recommended the ram you recommended you basically helped me build these guys yeah got dude. the 4090 got like i literally bought four 980 pro ssds um <laughs> two for four the nas two for the nas and then one for amanda four one for two me. terabyte ones dude yeah, yeah oh my god dude they they're only they were, i know like, only i know bucks. they're, they're, they're like, probably cheaper than your hard drive i man. was like what the hell yeah they were yeah. so and then for the we're building a NAS build with my old uh, PC here, the with the fifty nine fifty X in it. It's right. gonna have uh, it's gonna have twelve eighteen terabyte hard drives, and I already bought them. Couldn't go for the twenties, <laughs> could you, dude? No, couldn't I couldn't go for the twenties. I the twenties. I, it was the difference between F and spending. Chat for, it was for all that space lost. It dude. was a lot of money on Newegg. I think F I spent and like chat, it was dude. basically the difference between four thousand and five thousand dollars. And I was like, the amount of uh, I was like, the value buy is the yeah the value is buy the is 18. the eighteen yeah. Uh, so I I went with the eighteen, especially because I don't need realistically I don't need that much storage. Like I, I do have like a thirty five terabyte NAS right now that's like full. And, um, so I do need more storage, but I don't need more than what I'm getting. Right. Sure. And, and effectively, just so you know, after I do my ZFS stuff, I'll probably have a hundred usable terabytes realistically. That's a lot um, of space. Yeah, it, it is a lot of space. Uh, it's really because, uh, you know, we do a lot of, uh, I know Amanda runs her YouTube channel. She does a lot of 4k 60, uh, game streams, game capture. And that's a lot of footage. Sure. Um, you know, I'm we're doing 8K footage on the uh, A1. That's a lot of freaking space, and it kind of just adds up, man. Like it does. It adds up surprisingly quick. If man. you keep, if you're a hoarder like me and want to keep all your raw footage, yeah. Um, it kind of sucks. So I'm like, you can't compress videos if you didn't know. Like they're already kind of compressed to hell. Um, so well, you can compress video, but like not really. You can re-encode it. Audio is harder um, to compress, if I remember correctly. I'm not sure. I, I just know it's like hard to. Um, it's really hard to con compress something without doing a complete re-encode. I just remember um, from my days of trying to find <clears throat> digital backups right. of my Blu-ray movies. <clears throat> yeah, I know that the ones with uncompressed audio were like 20 gigs larger than the yeah. ones without uncompressed audio. Yeah. Yeah, and that's another funny thing, dude. I, I was trying to get a, a digital backup of Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, sure. that thing was unbelievable. Like, the if you wanted all the seasons in, like, Blu-ray, it was like, I don't even want to know. It was like, it, it was just like the whole collection was just ridiculous. Uh, if you got 4K, like, the 4K HDR rips, like, it was like, oh, my God. So I ended up just, like, you know, 
using my Blu-ray copy instead of right. having it on right. Plex. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Um, so I was like, okay, I'll just re- bust out the Blu-rays, but um, and that was fine. But like, it was it would have been convenient. Like Plex is so convenient. You know what I mean? Plex is great. Dude. Um, and that's another reason the NAS exists, right? It it's like my Plex server, right? Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, let me tell you a little bit about the NAS build because it's actually yeah, really dude, exciting. Go on. Go so on. it's gonna have. 12 bays, so those uh, 18 terabyte boys are going in there. Uh, it's going to be a ZFS pool. Have you used ZFS at all? Do you know much about it? I know a little bit about it, but probably like 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 not enough that I could talk about it. Yeah, if that makes sense. So it's kind of like I, fancy. It, it it's a parity drive one, isn't it? Well, it works. You can set it up like a RAID and everything. Like I'm going to have mm-hmm. uh, what they call a, a RAID Z2, which is just two drive redundancy Parody, right right yeah so i'm setting that up i'm gonna have one uh giant uh, uh v dev with the two pair parity drives um you could set it up a different way like before i consulted my buddy i was gonna have what they call two v devs uh with six drives a piece what's a v dev a v dev is just like a collection of drives right so like okay. I, I was gonna do so, two six drive v devs so it's basically like a volume of no. multiple drives um not really because okay. basically they were gonna be a part of the same zfs pool right and um the way it does it is it's almost like having a raid zero and uh <laughs> it's almost like having a raid zero where um so basically each VDEV kind of like splits well, the data let me explain this them. let me explain this in my terms okay. that, that doesn't understand it it's and complicated tell me if i'm right yeah. or wrong go ahead so could you take let's say that i have six drives okay right. let's say i have eight drives actually let's okay, say I have eight sure. drives eight C- can i have a vdev of three and a vdev of three and then use zfs to raid zero those two vdevs so so it's so like you're basically creating like a virtual disk out of three disks and then you're raid zeroing these virtual disks. So you you went and said you close? had eight drives, and then you said three and three. So what well, you meant to say was four and four, right? Well, no, because I was using two for parity. parity. I, I know so those two the parity, parity drive counts. exists outside of the VDEV no, or exists within. within each one. Okay, it's within. Okay, so like you would have. Okay, so like say you have a one VDEV pool and then right. a second VDEV pool of four and four. Four and four, yep. But each one would only have three usable. Correct. Okay. Okay. So and then the ZFS parts, would be the, the 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 file system that 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 RAID zero is those two VDEVs. Yeah. So basically, you get a All performance right. imp- increase, right? Because it mm-hmm. has two VDEVs that it can split the right. data between. So it's like a RAID zero. The problem is, you you get one drive redundancy, but um, that's it. Like yeah. across the whole thing. So um, if you were to it's not like you get two drive redundancy still, you know what I mean? Cause you have two parity drives. You still only get one drive redundancy. So yeah, it's like a raid zero and a raid five kind of mixed from my understanding. I'd have to talk to my buddy, Alan to get like the golden truth on it. Okay. But that's the reason I was like, okay, for performance reasons, I'll do the two V devs, six drives each. Then he was like, ah, oh, the performance increases are there, but it's not really, it's more an IOP improvement and you don't really need it. And I was like, okay, what about well, like games for like games, like, uh, right. like if you wanted to run like games or photo edit off of a, a NAS. Like a, yeah, that's a good like, question. I feel like, I feel like a Lightroom catalog does, would benefit greatly from IOPS. Yeah. And, and it, 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 that might be the case. So what I'm going to do is do some benchmarks because you can, I can easily test this by just like creating the, sure. the, 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 um, <laughs> Gosh, creating the ZFS pool with a certain mm. way, do the benchmark, then create it another way, do a benchmark before I actually put any actually real data on it. Just do some like reads and writes and, and get some performance numbers. Cause I'm by another thing I'm doing is upgrading my home net to 10 gig. So I bought 10 gig NICs for uh, my server computer, the NAS, my PC, Amanda's sure. computer. Um, I bought a 10 gig Unify a Ubiquiti switch. And or with uh, the what is it? You got like eight SFP ports. I bought the SFP modules. I bought everything, mm-hmm. and I was like a thousand dollars to get the. Uh, I use that point by the way. Yeah, good. Uh, how is it? 
because I love it I've because yeah. uh, it's the only, or I don't know if it's the only, but it's one of the cheapest ways to get 2.5 gig, uh, to get 2.5 gig negotiated to clients on Ubiquity. So okay. the switch aggregate and the flex switch will do one, 2.5, five, and 10, whereas most of their products will only do one or 10. Yeah, and I noticed that, and wasn't it the? I heard people complaining about that, so I was like, okay, yeah, well, dude. that's wild. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so for me, I was just like, okay, well, I'm going the full 10 gig because I want to have fast read writes to my NAS, mm -hmm. and like right now with our Synology NASes, they're just like one gig, and that's it. So Even like, though they got four, you can't really aggregate them together to be like four gigabit. You're still stuck with one. Uh, it's just like you can have four. Sure individual links like 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 four different computers like on a, a a lan accessing the nas at one gig you can do that but you can't have like one client getting more than just one gig so i i was like okay it's time for 10 gig it's time to go big well what you're talking there is just a inadequate switch backplane right so yeah it's just not yeah exactly it's just the backplane doesn't support any kind of uh additional mm -hmm. uh configuration right uh, other than the way it is uh, with the their individual one gig ports, more or less. Right. Um, I forget what the the actual protocol is with the way it, how it works, but yeah, it doesn't matter. That's just an excess. We're going ten gig, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be awesome, man. Uh, I yeah, was talking so to my buddy, and he's advising me to. I was gonna do True NAS Core as the operating system, mm -hmm. but um, he says I should use Proxmox. Do you know anything about that? I don't. Proxmox is like a, it seems like a virtualization platform, okay. Linux based. And it's really great about like VMs. Jank included, dude. Yeah, dude. I love, <laughs> we'll talk about Linux jank, dude. But, uh, yeah, dude. you know, it, it's going to be Linux. It's going to be, it's really for virtualization. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of videos from like Wendell and stuff online on Proxmox and how cool it is. Well, if he um, uses it, it's good. Yeah, exactly. So, so and yeah, you know, my buddy, yeah, that's the thing. I was talking to my buddy, Alan, and he's friends with Wendell. So he yeah. was like, yeah, you know, me and Wendell and like, this is the way. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm listening to you guys. This you guys know what way, you're doing. I was like, this way. is the way. Well, he, you know, cause he likes true NAS core. He said, it's like the iOS of like doing NASs. And I was like, sure. well, that's a compliment, dude. Like, why don't yeah, I do dude. it? I'm like, all right, you just sold me. Dude. Yeah. He's like, that's like the iOS way that that's like the Apple way of doing an ads. And I'm like, well, that's good. Right. Like, but he's like, well, if you want more customization capability, like sure. true NAS core and true NAS scale, there's two different versions. They kind of box you in. And he's like, you don't really want to do that on your server. Right. Cause you want to be able to do whatever you want. So he's like, well, use Proxmox. Because then you can pull your Docker stuff off of your Synology NAS, put it on the new NAS. Oh, nice! Right, that, and, that's um, useful. You can do you can put VMs on it and stuff. And and I was like, yeah, okay, that's great. Because I want to migrate off of, you know, my server computer using Hyper V. I want to start sure. migrating those those VMs off, and like put them onto Proxmox or something. Because right now, uh, those VMs, uh, I, I I just don't like running a windows 10 server if that makes any sense makes perfect sense windows 10 wants to reboot all the time and yeah. you know it's really i just need a windows 10 vm i don't really want to use windows 10 as my hypervisor for vms so yeah man it's pretty exciting because i'm doing a lot at once building two computers building a nas um building a lot of things yeah dude. redoing your network yeah. redoing my network like it's it's very exciting Although I'm going to be exciting. so busy, like, you know, I basically, um, this month is like so busy that I don't know when I'll be able to do this stuff, <laughs> but I'll keep the podcast updated yeah, as, man, let uh, us know. as all let the us builds know. progress. Let us know. So it's going to be fun. Anyway, let's move on to Steam Deck real quick. Sure. So Steam Deck, man, I didn't think you were getting one. I didn't think I was getting one either. And then you were like, Hey bro, uh, I'm getting a Steam Deck. I'm like, what? It didn't go down like that. All right. Well, how'd it Give go down? Give me some credit. What's Give your me some side credit, of the story? Dude. <laughs> What's your side wow, of the story, dude? dude? Give me some credit. <sighs> well, uh, so essentially how it went down, right, yeah. is um, I was on Steam. <laughs> and okay. I saw the Steam Deck's flash screen. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, 
I'll just get in line again. You know, it says shift September to December, right. whatever. If I don't want it, whatever. But if I change my mind between now or December, I'm in line. You right. know what I mean? Okay. That's how they like get you. Like now, because you're a little, a little, <laughs> uh, uh, tempter over there and now i'm thinking about getting in line in, at bnh for a 4090 even though i don't really want one right right but anyway uh yeah and then like literally within like what was it do like a week it was like yo it's up it's ready to go and then like i talked to you about it and you convinced me in like three words i'm not even sure how you do that i don't know but, but like you basically said three things and i was like all right i'll buy it i mean like it's not that yeah. expensive right it's like an ipad mini if i don't like it i don't like it you right know? right uh so I ended up getting it and it's, I love it. I use it so much. I use it every night. I, no I take it to work with me. I, I, it's always on my desk. I'm always finding different things to do with it. I'm playing different games that I normally wouldn't play, uh, because of the steam deck, because the form factor is so like lucrative. Um, for those of you who listen to the podcast quite frequently, you should know that I like smoking meat outside on my smoker. Uh, it's like super relaxing to just like sit on the deck while I have some meat on and just, you know, play my games, dude, like wherever I want to go. Right. You know? Like, right. Uh, it's actually really, really cool. And like the things it does outside of just playing steam games is they, they work better than I thought they would. Uh, it's, it's like having every console from like, I don't know, from like the dawn of console era up to like. I would say probably like Xbox reliably right. working. Yeah. Um, and just having that library with you wherever you want to go is really cool, you know? Like, uh, yeah. super random, but also kind of cool just to like give you a little bit of like, I don't know, like backstory. Um, there's a game for the Nintendo 64 called Diddy Kong Racing, and like, it's just a kart racer, right? Like, it's like a Mario Kart clone. But, that game i just have really fond memories of that game like just like where i where, where i was in, in like my childhood and stuff um i just really enjoyed diddy kong racing and now it's on my steam deck whenever i want it and i was playing it the other day outside for like an hour and a half man i was like reliving my childhood and like right ha being able to do that so easily wherever i want is like the coolest thing and um for the, for those of you you know who are who may be on the fence or thinking about getting a steam deck i was on the fence and eric knows for sure that i was on the fence because yes. if i don't buy something right away that's like sub a thousand dollars that sounds terrible right like <laughs> i know, I know. <laughs> like i probably don't really want it you right, know right. and that's where steam deck was like i uh, i just it was just one of those things that was like i don't know how much i'm going to use it i don't know like uh what games are going to be compatible and how the performance is going to be and it's one of those things that like i i dove right in and everything runs way better than expected everything is super fun to set up like yeah i i mean outside of your normal steam games there 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 is some what we have have now coined you know linux linux jank to get to to, to run that's kind of a game in and of itself and then you get like this like little micro like self-accomplishment high yeah when you get something running that that that's just like this little dopamine hit of like i did that dude yeah, yeah I there totally it is know what you, mean. you know i get that you know same I mean? thing like, so like it's almost like getting that same like like uh like high from like beating a boss in a game or something just from setting up the game and that's kind of cool to me you know what i mean like again um my friend uh you you know who he is too two shots from wow right he was talking about the steam deck and he was like so how is it and i said dude i love this thing but honestly like don't buy it expecting you know like an apple product because i know he loves apple products and like he and like he notoriously almost bought the fold but said he wouldn't because he's just sick of tinkering and he wants his things to just work right i said listen like the steam deck is great but if you want certain things to run like i, I know you play wow addictively like if you want wow to run on it it's it'll work perfectly but you're gonna have to you know use like lutris and you know right. build appreciator cache process, and all that stuff yeah. and he was like I, I i i i'm out you know what i mean but like if you're willing to put in the work it rewards you in like troves dude. it does that's what's great about it is like even though you got linux jank it's like the linux community is so sharp they can basically get anything to work on yeah dude you know like you might have to yeah. tinker but you can do it and it's it, like that it's like that saying that's become a meme from uh jurassic park 
where Jeff Goldblum was like, huh, wife, huh, finds a way. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. Linux, uh, finds a way. It's the same And it really thing. is true. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I, I just think it's 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 a really cool device. Um, MU Deck is super cool because it ties in all of, uh, it, it ties in retroachievements.org, which for those of you who don't know, what retroachievements.org is, it's a website and a community-driven project that adds automatic leaderboards and achievements to, re to retro games. So like Kelly loves Donkey Kong, right? She loves Donkey Kong Country. Like she could probably speed run that game. Like I could probably sign her up for AGDQ and she would put up a really good time <laughs> in that game. It's wild to me. Like she plays wow. like two games religiously. She plays The Sims and Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo. Uh, and like she speed runs it. It's, it, it's insane amazing. to me. I love that. Um, and, it, and, and it's like one of those games where like she doesn't get bored of it. Like I could honestly put donkey kong in her hands and she's like oh i'll beat it again i'll beat it again you know what wow. i mean uh yeah but anyway uh what, what was really cool about that was like as she was going through the game like these little achievements were popping up for the game that looked just like steam achievements like the integration was so perfect and then every time she would start like a level or a bonus round or something it would pop up that that would say like so and so level uh speed run time being recorded and then without her even having to interact or do anything it was uploading all these achievements and all of these leaderboard scores to our profile on retroachievements.org and then if you open up the overlay it has like the full achievement tracker just like a steam game or an xbox game would right. for all these retro games it is so cool yeah it is so well done it, it it's it, it just impresses me every time I load, a, I load a retro game that has that feature, like, supported in it. Because it is community-driven, right, guys? So, like, someone has to go out for a specific game and make where the leaderboards are and make the achievements and make them trigger. So not every game has it, but I would say, you know, like, if you think of, like, oh, I want to play some retro games, and you think of, like, the really popular ones and not the obscure ones, they probably have support for it. That's insane because, yeah, like you say, like somebody's got to like look at the memory and shit. Like, yeah, the, and yeah. look at like in real time what's going yeah, on and under like, the hood and, and then and, they can and, find and, the And like flags. the binary allocation tables to see when certain things are done to trigger achievements. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, That's so crazy. Yeah, dude. It's wild what people are willing to do. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's really the, the story of the Steam Deck. I think that for us, like who can appreciate the the marvel of what it is like yeah. it's such a fun device it's such know? a fun device it, it really it is, is it is so cool like i said man like i i'm honestly looking forward to saturday because saturday we don't have a lot of plans so i'm gonna wake up i'm gonna do what we're, we're called dirty eggs on the smoker and then uh, i'm gonna have some coffee outside play some steam deck then we're going to go take some fall photos before the leaves change. Nice. And then uh, my buddy's coming in from New York, so we're going to put a pork shoulder on. But while I'm cooking that, I'm going to game outside. Why would I game inside? It's beautiful out. Right. You know? No, I mean, so, that's the time of the year. Like, when yeah, it's not dude, too hot It's like hoodie cold. weather. It's yeah. not too hot. Um, there, It's usually overcast, so I can see the screen on the Steam Deck. That's nice. Yeah. You know? No, for sure. I mean, that's the thing. So, like, yeah, I mean, one of the things I noticed today is I have a coworker. She... Um, brought her steam deck to work i recommended it to her and uh she sure. was like pretty hyped about it and i helped her set it up and one of the things like she's not really a tinker like us right like she's mm -hmm. an it person but she's not like somebody that would want to like tinker she's sure. you know she was somebody that like you you said two shots who would appreciate no setup at all and i, right. I basically was like well check it out because she's not really a big gamer uh but she she wants the game so she mm -hmm. was like all right and i just showed her like the the great on deck section and like she was like dang like she went to the discount store and like picked up some games for like under five dollars that were like really good looking oh that's cool and she just yeah. like these i was like these are great on deck like you're gonna get the a seamless experience if you stick in this area and um so i think like you can have like a pretty seamless yeah. experience on yeah, the Steam so, deck if you stick to that you know oh yeah I mean? if you stick to that for sure yeah but if you but 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 like you could to your point you could buy the steam deck right and just stick to great on deck games yeah and have like a, and have a great experience. time and have a great time yeah but that's also like a very small piece of the pie of what the steam deck is actually capable of yeah it's like as soon as you're willing and, to like go out of your box a little bit like it opens up the possibilities of this thing like i use it as like a desktop pc like at work mm -hmm. and it's great and then like oh yeah i want to ask you about the dock too I honestly did. The dock is really yet? nice. I have it right here. I okay. mean, I I can hold it up. 
Okay, sure. I'm gonna block my eyes a little. Wow, bit. it's smaller than I imagined. Okay. Yep. There it is. So Clean. this is the official deck doc that just came out, which is like the best name ever. Uh, <laughs> it really because is. Because it's really close to Dick Doc. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it does sound like it. <laughs> doesn't it, dude? Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, what's special about the Steam doc, the Steam Dick Doc, Deck Doc versus like your third party one on Amazon is one, it's almost double the cost. So it's, uh, was it $80, $90? I don't know, uh, it's 80 or 90 bucks. Okay. We could probably look it up um, versus 50, which is what the J Sox doc is on Steam. That okay. was like the gold standard before the Steam Deck came out. Right. So you're looking at a bit of a premium for the official one. Um, what you're getting is, uh, I'm trying, uh, it's $89, so it's 90 okay. bucks. Okay, so it's $40 premium over what the third party one is. What you're actually getting though uh, is, you know, it comes with the same valve warranty as like the Steam Deck does. But what's more important about it is it uses USB 3.1 um, uh, USB ports, which is okay. significantly faster than 3.0 ports. And this is the only dock that does that. So that's kind of cool because like they were already saying online that like you can like put games on a thumb drive or put games on like an external hard drive and keep that docked. Oh my gosh. And yeah, you just dock yeah. and then everything's there. Yeah. yeah so it's like, so, so like that, that, that's kind of worth it, I think. But also, um, Valve has promised future updates to the dock for question mark reasons. Like with the official one, the Steam Deck firmware or Steam OS or whatever it's called, Deck OS, recognizes when the official dock is plugged in and it pushes firmware updates to the dock. Ooh, so like if they want to unlock like different you know like vrr or something or different resolutions i'm just like spitballing of what they might do but it supports firmware updates through the steam deck on the official dock so for 40 bucks you know i i feel like that peace of mind to get something that will always work um and again i haven't tried mine yet but just from reading the forums like there there, there have been some like i don't want to say jank but like just typical USB C hub stuff with the with, right. with the JSOX dock because it just views it as a USB C hub, right? right? Whereas with the Steam Deck dock, apparently it looks for display out, it looks for controllers, like it, it just knows what it's talking to. You know what I mean? It's like an extension of its hardware, right? Is, right. Is the way so, you're so for me, it. it's it seems like it's going to be worth the extra forty bucks, you yeah. know? And I mean, it may be. So you know, test it out. Let me know. I will. I will. Like I said, I yeah. it's it's still bundled up i didn't even get a chance to plug it in today at least so. nice it's nice enough to be like a stand also i had to 3d print one yeah it is nice to be a stand yeah, so um for those of you who listen and have a steam deck it will absolutely not fit if you have any sort of case on it i'm not a case guy um so i'm fine but if you have like the d brand kill switch or the speaking case you'll have to take it out of the case to use the dock um that's yeah. just one thing to keep well, in mind if, if you want to use the docked yeah because <laughs> you could technically just have it right off right. to the side plug yeah in. yeah if you if, if, if you want to use the stand portion yeah, of it yeah but yeah yeah pretty interesting but i'm glad that you've had a good experience with the steam deck i know that oh, you've dude, been it's hyped. become it's become something i use every day yeah. you know what i mean uh like because now when i get off the computer i can go unwind in bed i could turn the lights off and i could still get some gaming in you know like yeah. uh vampire survivors is great for that i so. got a game for you it's okay. called uh bro tato Okay. It's kind of right. like All Vampire right. Survivors ripoff, but it's its own kind of flavor. And uh, sure. it's like cheap on Steam. I, I picked it up because uh, you know how I was going into the game dev stuff and I kind of yeah. fell off it for a bit, but like yeah, yeah. it's made in the Godot engine. So oh, that's a big so reason. You were interested. Uh, yeah, I was interested just interested. because it's uh, to support a Godot game. Yeah. And I picked it up and I've been kind of playing that, dude. Like I think that you would like it. Um, okay i'll yeah. check it out check it out it's a bro good yeah, dude. bro tato dude uh cheap little fun vampire survivors style game yeah sounds sounds like something i would enjoy anyway dude um i think we ought to move on to our last topic you know what i'm saying i think we're done no actually. we got a segment uh we got a segment that we got you know our week weekly uh weekly dude weekly what? sorry by dude. sorry yeah bi-weekly segment yeah i don't know what um, that means dude our segment that we have uh which, which is uh what phone is randy using this week <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what what this phone segment is it ends here, dude. No, it doesn't, dude. It's it's it keeps this going. Wait, didn't it end here, like dude. when we got the phones? Like the, 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 the fold four? Like, I, no? I, I've never had a fold four. I don't know what phone that is. You don't know? What, oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Is that a Huawei device, dude? dude? No, dude. What are you talking Huawei? about? You never had one, huh? Mm. Let's rewind Huawei, back in dude? time and look at our previous dude, we don't, podcast. We don't, I'm going to burn down your NAS, dude. <laughs> Hope you have a drive oh, failure. Shit. No. No. <laughs> it's all right. I'll have two drive redundancies. So. Well, all right. So, show it off, dude. Let's see what you so, got. What you got, got man? Today. Today. Today, dude. There it is. Always on. Always on, dude. Never off. Never off. So, you know, you chickened out. Didn't get the purple. Didn't get the I, purple. I, no, I, I couldn't do the purple. I get it. I get it. Did you see it in person? It looks amazing in person. You like didn't to the point it? where to the point where after I saw it in person at the Apple store, I considered getting it. Okay. Um, and then you were like, eh, it doesn't match anything. It kind is that, of is that what so like um I like leather cases. I mean like I'm sure it would look great in leather cases and stuff. Well but, um honestly, okay, here's what I'll say, okay? Here's what I'll say. Um uh I would have gotten the purple if they stuck with space gray again. Mm, okay. But because they went with space black. Okay. I didn't um, realize it was different. So it is yes. is it darker? It's is it wick, deeper? It's, it's it's like murdered out. Like I don't oh, know if you can see, shit. but like if you see it now, like look at the side rails, dude. Like they are they Ooh, are black. Yeah. See it? Yeah. I like it. Like it is super black. All right, dude. So it is like So yeah, yeah. So you haven't had it for like hours, right? I um, I I've had it for what time is it now? And you probably like still have some hours. setup to do. I have all the setup to do. Yeah. So so give me your give me your hot takes, man. Because you were using um, the fold for like I don't know a couple weeks, and then all of a sudden, couple weeks, dude. <laughs> you give me no credit, dude. I dude, lasted the fold literally. Hasn't been that long. I dude. lasted almost two months. Bro. Oh my god, dude, that's a record. Dude. I lasted almost two months. Wow. Dude. That says something about the fold. The fold's a good phone. Wow. <laughs> lasted almost two months, dude. <laughs> okay. So, so give me the rundown, man. Cause like, w I remember a podcast, uh, not long ago where we were I don't remember discussing the, uh, the, the benefits of the fold and why we're staying with it. Um, so tell me like so far, how, how do you like it? I, What's cool? I mean, give me the hot takes. I'm still in the honeymoon phase. So of course, I'm going to say I like it a lot. All right, give me. The, you know? Do you have any hot takes yet? I know that you I have in three hours of hot takes, but like, give me the. I do have some hot takes. First impression. Um, I feel like Dynamic Island is cool. It's really cool yeah, when it okay. works, and not to say that it's buggy and it doesn't work or something like that. I'm saying that like, it's kind of like what I told you before. Like phone calls use the Dynamic Island, but then if you text me. It just puts the notification below the, the dynamic island. Right. Like it doesn't even like use the dynamic island at all. It just comes in like your old iPhone notification. And right. that's just weird to me, right? Like you have yeah. this, you have this like really fleshed out, like beautiful, like, um, uh, like, like designed right. interface that, that are designed to show dynamic notifications and be like this really cool thing. And it is, it just isn't used by messages, which you would think is like the most popular thing to use it for. So yeah. I don't know if that's just not coming yet and that's coming in a future update or if it's one of those things where it's like they tried it and it just didn't show enough information. You know what I mean? Because like, I don't think that they would sacrifice that much usability, if that makes sense. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, so yeah, I don't know, man. I I'm really curious how they'll like do a 50-50 with it. Do you get like notifications with it? I don't know how for it works. For some things. Okay. For some things. Okay. Like but like for, not like iMessages. For, um, no. No. Okay. Like phone calls. It's like the first notification I've seen okay. on it. Okay. Um, and I think you said element notifications, which is our chat app. It, it's the same thing as messages. Okay. Uh, Interesting. Like face ID like comes down from it. So like the, the notch just grows into a square. That's kind of cool. So it sounds like it's going to be up to individual developers right. uh, to uh, to tweak their notification API to use it and uh, if, the, it's, if it matters. The API isn't released yet to third parties, as far as I know. 
Okay, so yeah, I I, I noticed that the, that a couple things under the hood just magically work, like the music app stuff, and you know, yeah, those work great. Yeah, like pushing calls up to the top, uh, like swiping up to the top to like bring the call up is really wild. Yeah, because when you have a call and, and like you're on a screen that's not the, the the obvious call screen, it'll show the call time to the left of it, right? And then it'll show you your waveform on the right in green and your caller's waveform on the right coming in from the other side in orange. Okay. And it's an actual waveform of what you're saying and what they're saying. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, that's the music just like controls a, up top is kind of cool. Yeah. The timers up top is really neat. The apps that do work with it are pretty cool. Like uh, the Reddit app, Apollo, um, does this thing now with a dynamic island where it puts this little like Tamagotchi on yeah. top of the on top of the dynamic island yeah and he's just chilling and you can he, he just chills up there like he runs back and forth excuse no me no way and then that's the dude you you can interact with him by like feeding him apples and carrots and all this no stuff. way but 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 you you can only feed him a certain amount of times right and you can play with him to like increase his happiness and increase your bond with him and all this stuff no um yeah and how and like so, so, so like if I launch the app now, it'll say like two food available or something, so I can no feed him way. twice. And the and, and and the way for me to get the energy to feed or play with him again is is I have to scroll through Reddit. So how far I scroll is no how much way. I can interact with my Tamagotchi. Dude, my Tamagotchi is gonna be full. You're yeah, gonna be dude. a fatty, dude. Oh my god! You didn't tell me about that. I had an iPhone already, dude. Yeah, what dude. How cool world? is that, dude? Yeah, you don't get that shit on Android. Shit. No, dude. I mean, you're lucky you get a functioning app on Android. <laughs> but, don't talk shit now that you're on the but, other side. <laughs> but yeah, dude. So, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, okay, so like, so you got the button. iPhone 14 Pro Max, right? Like yeah, the so big like, boy. You, you you probably can't. Okay, hold on. Are you trying to show me? Uh, focus. Um, no, no. Uh, uh, boy up there on top of the island. Uh, uh, yeah, I see him. I see him wiggling. So if I tap on him, you gonna tap him? Oh, I can't see. Let me see. Like that's the interaction. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I see him now, but you already did it. Oh, I feed, play. And then I see my scroll thing. Change pixel pal. Okay. Oh. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So like, it, it, it's like I gotta scroll Reddit, man. I gotta feed my little pixel pal. <laughs> Dude, Android Reddit apps, <laughs> dude, they need to get on that level. Yeah. Shit. Okay, so that's pretty cool. That's Apollo. Mm -hmm. And, uh, okay, wow. I mean, so I'm already sold, right? So, like, what already, else? Dude. Um, so, okay, Dynamic Island's cool. What else was cool? So, 2,000 nits, right? You said that um, you it, went outside with the outside. thing. It's crazy outside. It's like I'm looking at the screen in a dark room. You had, did you have the fold with you or no? Did you compare? I mean, I've used the fold outside, so I've seen what it looks like outside. So, what's your impression then? Um, the fold is totally usable outside, right? Like, it looks fine outside. It, there's no problem with it outside. Um, usable but, is different than. Pleasant. But the iPhone looks like it does. Like, like, like the sun doesn't even phase it. Like that's, there's like, no way, dude. So dude, I've never so seen that. Bright. So I've had the what? It, like, I had the iPhone like it what, is 13? so bright. So there's a caveat to it. Um, caveat is you cannot just turn up the brightness and get to 2,000 nits by itself. You have just to like actually indoors, be outside. Just like indoors, you can do it, yeah. Yeah. Which um, is like the Fold 3 was like that, right? Like What so... they did add that I didn't even know that they added until I was interested in getting a phone is the iPhone now has an ambient light sensor on the front and on the back. Ooh, interesting. And their reasoning for saying that is is because phones like if you're in a room right right uh it may not be able to do accurate uh auto brightness because right. your face is always casting a shadow on it so now yeah. it takes data from the front and back of the phone to adjust the brightness yeah. to the environment you're in that's like, so smart like no like seriously. that's definitely like like an over-engineered apple solution but i love it no it's it's so smart like there's times that i turned off the adaptive brightness on android because oh, me too. It's, it's 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 not good. 
it's yeah, not good. Like, um, and, and it just never gets the brightness right. Like on iOS, I actually used it, but then yeah. on Android, I didn't. And yeah. it was just because I couldn't get it to react in a way that I felt was natural. And a part of that could have been resolved like with Apple's implementation with their dual sensors. Like I would have issues where like it might be um, like really bright, like – it, you know, in, I might be in a bright environment, but a shadow's casting on the front of the phone, right? Sure. And then it would dim, and I'm like, "What the fuck?" And then I have to. That's why I would turn it off because it just it just wouldn't do what I wanted. And right. um and so like yeah, that's pretty cool, man. That's really yeah, good. So two thousand. I mean, it's like little things, you know, like it's just yeah. One thing just, I you know the iPhone just, may not do as much as the fold, yeah. but what it does, it does the best. Let me tell you something that bothered me about my. When sure. about my iPhone is it would overheat like in like outdoor situations and the screen would dim. Uh, yeah, the whenever the phone gets hot, uh, like you could be watching a video, like say mm -hmm. you're watching like a 4K video, sure, and the phone will heat up and like at least older iPhones and it would dim the screen like to dummy dim levels, sure, and. I don't know if the iPhone still does that. I don't know. But it felt so, like if you use the phone a lot uh, in a big way, a lot of processing power maybe, it's going to dim the screen to cool off. So I could speak to that a little bit because I watched a video. So the 14 Pro Max still does dim. Okay. Um, But it was a side-by-side -side comparison of the 12 Pro Max, the 13 Pro Max, and the 14 Pro Max. Right. And... The 12 Pro Max got almost dark. Um, <clears throat> the uh, 13 Pro Max got almost dark. And when the 14 Pro Max dimmed, like, you could barely tell that it dimmed. Wow. I mean, that's so, so good because, like, that was, like, one of the biggest detractors I had with... Because I would have it actually happen more often than you would think. Mm -hmm. I've never, like, I've never had the screen dim on a Fold, ever. Sure. Like... I have. Like, I, from what? Like, heating up? Yeah, so like uh like I said, like I've been playing games outside when I'm smoking and stuff. Yeah. And like I got my fold in like August, right? So like September and August were still kinda of warm outside. Yeah. But if I was like in my chair and like there was like direct sunlight, so like it was like kinda of like like almost I was right. almost getting a suntan, right? And I was playing Wild Rift, it would get to the point where I just couldn't see the game anymore. Okay, so that makes sense. So I haven't tested a gaming scenario, like a three mm -hmm. D rendered like okay, scenario. So so that's what I thought you meant. So the 14 Pro Max only dimmed in a game. Okay. It only dimmed. He was doing the 3D mark, like wildlife benchmark on loop. Oh. But oh, he couldn't wow. get it to dim under nor like 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 normal usage. Yeah, because like I would get the you. iPhone. But like, uh, I'm sorry. I thought yeah. I thought you meant gaming. Well, so. here's what I would do: is sometimes I would run my VPN or whatever. Sure. Uh, and like that would actually like kind of cause some heat. Like mm -hmm. my VPN, like I, you can set up WireGuard or OpenVPN, and I think WireGuard Guard is a little bit more efficient. Uh, but even yeah, the still, WireGuard protocol is wild. Uh, if you're watching, like, say you're watching like a 4K video, and you're watching it over a VPN with WireGuard, it's you know it's encoding your traffic or whatever. It's like um, sure, you know, and 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 so that's like double the workload for the uh, CPU on that bitch. So it's like right. Uh, it's it's a warm phone scenario, almost guaranteed, and so I was like, "Well, shit, you know, like that would happen." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, like, I don't really have those problems on the fold. So I'm really curious on on that particular use case. Yeah, um, I mean, I'll report back and let you know. But uh, right. from what I've seen, it only does it in like extreme gaming stuff because okay. uh, if you've watched stuff on like the A16. Like it's yeah. not that much more powerful than the A15, but like it doesn't really need to be, right? Like, um, is, is it's it like a, a different uh, nanometer process? Like yeah, whatever. But it, it just runs super code. cool and draws less power. Um, That's great. And then couple that with the fact that uh, you know, like the screen is obviously more efficient, is because screens get more efficient over time, and they um up and, and 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 they actually use different cooling on this one as well. So okay. Oh, nice, uh, nice. So, so yeah, so like I said, like in the video, it's still dimmed doing the 3D Mark Wildlife thing, but like nowhere near what the other two dimmed, and it didn't yeah. dim at all under just like normal phone usage. Okay, okay, good, good. All right, so next question though. Did you use the cameras yet? Just a little bit. 
Um, like just like you know, just to like launch it and make sure like the cameras worked right. You know, like okay. nothing, nothing you okay, might take okay. a photo of. Yeah. So uh, let me know how the workflow is. Like, if you take like sure. what is it called a uh, pro raw photos? Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna try it out because, um, I've been I saw videos to from get... photographers on like editing the photos. And... What shocks me on it, dude, is yeah. like it's like the first phone camera I've seen where if you shoot in 48 pro res, yeah, I. Uh, you don't really lose like 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 it doesn't turn to jello or like a, a watercolor when you zoom in like it looks yeah. like an actual camera have you noticed that in the videos yeah it's like not processed yeah and i love that because like yeah, yeah that was one of the problems it's just like really is... good quality you know what i mean like just for like zooming right. in it's actually really good quality um but what i will say is like apple has like set the gold standard for just usability in a camera because like sometimes on my fold and even my s22 ultra like i would open the camera app and sometimes like the the, the viewport would be laggy or i would push the shutter button and it wouldn't necessarily take a photo in the same split second that i pushed the button yeah. or then i would have to wait a second for the photo to process before i could take another photo like the right. apple one is like just immediately as soon as you launch the app you get no lag no setter you take a photo wow. is that still a problem on the android button. like what's that do you do you still feel like there's a big difference between android and ios in that regard because like um it was actually way worse like in the past where like ios it's was definitely like, getting android's definitely catching up i will say that they the still fold have... 4 is faster than the s22 ultra okay and that's because the s22 ultra is binning down from 108 megapixels it's yeah. like it has to do more so processing time yeah uh like that camera is slow man like that camera is almost unusable for anything that's not still life in my opinion right um just because you know like we're coming from a1s you know that that that, that kind of stuff um i would not use the s22 ultra camera uh at, for for anything that has like movement or like you want to take rapid photos of it right unless you turned off like or or or, or change something some sort of setting on it um the z fold 4 is significantly faster than that because it's bending from 50. yeah uh but the iphone is still the gold standard can, like, can i have you do a test for me actually so sure. one of the things that um i, I was... don't have the fold right now so i can't test that why not dude because i don't have the fold you got rid of it yeah, i got rid of Already? it dude. oh gone, no dude. Gone, dude. no wonder no wonder you were you were like oh i didn't do them side by side i thought yeah. i thought i told you not to get rid of it yet dude yeah did you trade it in no Okay. Did you private sell it? Sale, did you? Dude. Did you private have private oh, sale, dude? Private sale. Did you get anything good out of it? Money and a bottle of scotch. So. Oh well. Okay, yeah. dude. Okay. So here's here's the next part of the question. Um, sure. So uh, like, what I wanted you to do, uh, just for curiosity's sake, was I wanted to do a bokeh test because oh, the sensor okay. is supposedly larger, right? It's huge. It's so, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so so I could actually tell you that, like, the camera hump on this. Yeah, is the biggest camera hump I've ever seen. Yeah, and like I, and the I've actual the diameter of, of yeah. the lenses are massive, dude. Yeah. Like it's literally obnoxious. Yeah, it it is, and I love it. And I'm really curious to see if we'll get some like real bokeh because, like, on previous phone cameras, uh, it, like they faked it with like their uh, what do they call it? The true depth camera technology bs mm -hmm. where they try and like do the fake blur i want to see how well it does like bokeh in like a like a close-up shot or something you know yeah yeah um, I, I mean really i'll curious. send you some stuff yeah send me send me some tests man i will uh, i don't have a fold to compare it to but like it'd Did be interesting do? to uh well yeah i could take shots myself yeah. but i'm saying like i'd like to do a side by side sure. like, same uh, same photo yeah yeah same photo basically uh different phones so uh, yeah. Okay. Next topic, man. So the iPhone, uh, you'll, you'll keep us up to date and next podcast, I I'll get your, your full review. I will. But like what I, I want to do I now, will say right now, you, you know, just, yeah. just to kind of throw something else in there. Um, the one thing that that's really hard for me to get used to now is, uh, you know how we run animations on 0.5 speed, right? Everything feels slow right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, one of the things that I noticed about the iPhone is all the animations have a set speed. Yes. So you kind of develop a cadence for how you, do. you tap. You do. Things. So like a couple of days from now, I'll be fine. I think so. Because like the thing about Android is you're not, all the interactions aren't a consistent speed. Right. So what you end up doing is waiting for your moment where you you can tap and you have to like wait for everything to kind of stop yeah iphone then has a cadence tap. to it like yeah exactly but if you follow that cadence the way they set it up is like it's going to work 
Yeah. Like if you tap to cadence, it's gonna like the action will register. Whereas yeah. on Android, if you tap too early, now you're doing like a double tap scenario because it didn't register your first tap or like, you know, it's kind of like a little bit laggy because you're, you're kind of unrealistically doubling the speed or even right. getting rid of animations altogether if you're not. So, but you, you, the compromise is it's now inconsistent experience, whereas the iPhone offers you maybe a slower yet consistent one. So it's really a trade-off and I'll be interested to know if you can adapt. Yeah. Yeah. Now that, that makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. Uh, yeah. so yeah. Uh, oh, also let me touch on one more thing. I love the always on display. Yeah, like, you know, I don't know if we mentioned it in a previous podcast, but like we were kind of unsure about it. Yeah, so I'll tell you why I disagree with what m some YouTubers are saying. Sure, go um, ahead. Because of how the new iOS notifications work, where they kind of scroll in from the bottom, like you could just glance at, at your phone, and if there's nothing on the bottom of the screen, you didn't get a notification. Like, I don't understand that. Like, are these right. like those like type of psychos, like, like who just like have like a, a Rolodex of notifications on their lock screen? Because like. Right. I'm pretty, you know, OCD about clearing my notifications out. Um, I think what you're getting is some of the popular YouTubers, like, have a barrage, right? Right. Like, like no, if, especially if you have, like, that. Twitter notifications on and people are uh, mentioning you and, like, you got, like, a constant mega stream of shit sure. coming in. Maybe that's why, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. No, I get that. But, like, I think that's kind of kind of my point too right like if you're a normal user you're gonna love it i think um, that i would love it i i um, love it man like like it's really impressive to like look down at my phone and it looks like the screen is on yeah all like, the time like it yeah. feels like it's gonna sound weird but it feels like technology that didn't exist before <laughs> you know what i mean like it's i know what you mean it's it, it's wild to me well one so. of the cool things that you were telling me is the weather app animates yeah while so, it's chilling so so like there's like certain lock screens uh that will do wacky stuff yeah. because it's apple so like everything is just like utmost polished so like there's one that's like if you if, if you're if you like travel a lot right if you're like a world traveler it'll be the globe and it'll show you in real time where your pin is on the globe as you move that's kind of cool um but the, but the one i'm using now is uh it's it's the weather so it's based off of my location and it's the weather outside so based off of what my lock screen is doing, that's what it's doing outside. So like if it's sunny, there'll be a sun right. on there. If it'll be cloudy. If it's raining, there'll be rain on my yeah. lock screen. And I can see what the weather is just by looking down at my phone. I'm like, oh, it's raining. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's I just wild like that to me, because man. like, yeah. I mean, my Samsung fridge does that. But guess what? That thing isn't like yeah. Do you put your fridge in battery. your pocket, dude? Yeah, like yeah. Thing, like the thing is, the always on display like Android ones. It's just like black slab with a time and mm. like a couple notification things, and that's boring. Dude. Dude. yeah like the iphone's like exciting it's dynamic like that's cool i think it's and really neat i think, I think that it's really cool. android should adapt like this this mindset with it but the problem is like you're really going to need to be um smart about it like you know i'm sure the refresh rate can't be like crazy high when you're in the weather when when it's like, no it's the same one hertz it's yeah, the same yeah. one hertz yeah so it's not like animating it like smooth but it's like you're getting don't get me wrong bit. it's not like raining on my phone right? right but because it's so bright yeah i look down and i see raindrops on the screen you know what I mean? right. it's not like actual rain falling it is right. when i unlock it but when i'm looking at the always on display yeah. it just shows rain falling okay you know what okay I mean? that's what it is okay i mean i i think that's really cool so because the because the because the the refresh rate on the iPhone 14 is 1 to 120. Yeah. Yeah. What, what do they call those displays? The LTPO or yeah. whatever? Um, yeah. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So, okay. Last topic. Okay. And then we wrap the podcast. R last topic. Wrap it dude. up. Okay. So, uh, so the wrist. Okay. That What's yeah. that uh, What's that color match you got going on, dude? <sighs> All right, so this is the main reason why I switched, right? I, yeah, I wanted is. the Apple Watch Ultra because I think you would even agree that like yeah. the Galaxy watches are just not up to par with what Apple offers. They never um, have been. No, no. So they've only so, gotten yeah. a little closer every year, but like it's still not even close. Still, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like they're 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 definitely walking in the right direction. It's like I'm walking to walking. Europe, right? Yeah. Like technically, if I walk, like what is it, east? I'm getting closer, but there's still yeah. an ocean between us. Yeah, exactly. You know? And so, and Apple's only widening the gap with this Ultra because yeah. it's like that much cooler. 
So go ahead and like show it off, dude. I, I don't know if you can get the podcast to get a good image of it, but I'll uh, try, man. I'll yeah, try. I mean, if you can uh, do a little wrist check, yeah. <laughs> come on, come on, yeah. Okay, looks good, dude. So yeah, looks dude. Good. So it's uh, I mean, it's still at one hundred percent battery. If that says anything, so what? Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's been on wrist for battery. that long, and yeah, what yeah. the fuck? Uh, the compass is wild. Don't, don't like, um, don't they normally go to like 99 as soon as you take it off the freaking charger? Yes. Ex- it's, except for it's this. hundred. I don't know. They got a, they got a, they must have a curve on that shit. Dude. I don't know. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, uh, okay. So tell me what you think. Uh, it's fantastic. It's everything I've wanted. It's, it's lighter than the galaxy watch while also being bigger. Um, you may see on, on Reddit, that like people are saying like oh the actual screen size isn't that much bigger than the 45 millimeter watch series 8 and if you look at it in like a numbers game they're right it's not that much bigger but it's perceptively bigger because it's flat so like if you have like a watch series 8 or or, or a watch like that it has those really sleek and elegant rounded corners which kind of you know make the watch of that style look more fashionable right but you're also losing usable screen on those because it's wrapping right right so this one is just flat boy so like not not only is it a bigger screen but there's but every ounce of screen is usable okay so okay. uh so yeah so that's wild um the siren's crazy loud like oh here, god here, have you done it yeah here listen god kill me oh my god Oh, it's getting louder. Okay. Wow. Like that's pretty wild for a watch, I think, you know. Yeah. So that's cool. Uh, audio uh, alert. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, Okay, cool, cool. So I mean, the Wayfinder watch face is really cool. You know, how, how you can turn it up and then it goes into infrared mode's pretty awesome. Is that oh man, that sounds cool. Yeah, dude. Check this out. Let me see if I can show fucking there. infrared me, dude. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, dude, isn't that awesome? Yeah. Okay, so we're Inspector Gadget over here. Yeah, dude. So okay, so uh, and what do you think of that band? Because it looks kind of cool. Uh the band is wicked comfortable. Uh, it is a little harder to take off and put on than, than your normal band. Um, yeah, you gotta kind of figure it out. I noticed. I don't even. I don't even feel it on me. Like I always knew I had my Galaxy Watch on. I don't. I don't even know right. that this is on my wrist. To be honest with you. I mean, be, that's pretty cool for honest. how the size uh, it is. It's it's crazy light. Like I I didn't think that titanium would would make that big of a deal, but I literally can't even feel it on me. So yeah, yeah. I I, I don't know, man. The Ultra looks so so cool, and it's like, the coolest thing I, I've probably ever bought. Yeah, like, just from a. It's just so neat, dude. Like it's so big, and it just works. Yeah. And just having a a, a screen size like this on your wrist, and and I don't know, right. man. Like, like they definitely really, you know. I'm excited, they made man. Cool here, dude. I'm excited to see uh see all your workouts on there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, so obviously you just got that set up literally like three hours ago, yeah, same so time as your I'll, phone. I'll have more information on it next podcast. Yeah, so I'll, I'll get your like, um, I guess your conclusions in like two weeks if we have one in two weeks. Sounds good. Um, two weeks it is, buddy. Uh, I know I'll be on travel. So, uh, I think in two weeks, so okay. I, I we might have to skip a week. I don't know. Sure. Um, or I'll just do it from the hotel. I don't know. Sure. We'll see. Hotel internet's kind of dicey, so yeah. actually it's probably so not ideal. Maybe three weeks. Yeah, maybe three weeks. Um, but you know, cool, cool. I think we wrap up the podcast though, man. Unless you got any final thoughts on your iPhone situation? No, I think I'm thinking. And we're your good. Ca- camera shut off, so now's the time. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna wrap it. All right. Anyway, guys, that's been it. That's the Technostatic Podcast. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, if you like this podcast, give it a like on whatever platform you're on. I appreciate it. Check us out on technesthetic.com. You can see we're available on all your platforms from Spotify to YouTube. And uh, yeah, leave a comment on there, whatever. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. Later. Later.